Head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices and you can sign up for product alerts. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Years ago, Riot Games, who's known for making the video game League of Legends, came out with a board game and it was called Mechs vs. Minions and it took the board gaming community by storm by how amazing this game was. Well now they're coming out with their second title called Telstone's King's Gambit. So we were all very excited to see what this thing's all about. Let me show you what's played and I'll see you on the other side. Now I do want to first show off the box and the components of this. This is sort of a solid metal box that snaps shut. And once opened, you have four big solid tokens. These are kind of made of, it feels like sort of the ivory of dominoes. They're really thick and chunky and heavy. Comes with some player aids, a rule book, a player mat, and four, uh, three more tokens and two scoring tokens. Now at the beginning of the game, all seven of the tokens are placed off to the side of the play mat. You're gonna be interacting with these throughout the game. Now there's a play mat, so one player will sit on one side, and one player will sit on the other side. Now you're trying to win the game by being the first to either score three points, or there's a way to win immediately that I'll go over later. Now at the beginning of the game, one of these will be randomly placed face up in the middle of the play mat. Now over the course of the game, players are going to be telling the other player what to do with certain tokens that are here and ones that are on the mat. And this is sort of a memory and bluffing game where you're trying to keep track of where everything is, because you're gonna to need to know that in order to gain points and possibly win the game. For example, we're looking at this from our point of view. It's our turn and maybe we say, I want you to take the knight and place it next to the shield. Well, that other player has to take the knight and you tell it where to place it, here or here. Let's say we tell them to place it right here. Then it's the other player's turn. Maybe they also use a place action. They say, you know what? I want you to place the sword here. So we would pick up the sword and we'd place it here. So placing is one of the main actions in the game. Another one is I might say, you know what? I want you to hide the knight. And so the other player will just flip it over. So now you don't know what that is. Can you remember it? And the other player might say, you know what? I want you to swap these two. So then we would have to swap these two and follow their instructions. And there you have it. So maybe a little bit further, it might look like this. And you can peek. You can take a look at one of the stones and uh, see what's under there. We see it's the knight. And over the course of the game, things have been swapped. They've been moved around. They've been flipped over. And maybe you're not really sure where something is. Uh, on your turn, instead of doing one of those other actions, you can challenge and point to a face down stone and tell your opponent, I challenge you to name this stone. And if they guess it correctly, let's say they said knight, they would receive a point and they'd get a point like this. However, if they were wrong, we would receive a point just like that. Now, by the way, after an opponent has gained a point on your turn or on their turn, if you take the peak action, you actually get to look at three of them. Now, the last action you could take is how you could possibly win immediately. It's called boasting. And this is basically saying, I'm gonna boast because I believe that I can name all of these face down stones and where exactly they are. Now at that point, they have three choices. They could just say, mm, if you get it right, you're gonna win the game. Um, it's okay, you can just have a point. And in that case, they would just, uh, you, know, uh, you know, convene to you a point. So they don't wanna lose the game and they think you know, so they just give you a point instead. Or they could flip the tables and say, you know what, I don't care, I know them too. And then they flip the tables. Now they say they're gonna name them all. And then you would have to either say, I believe you, I give you a point, or you could say, prove it. And when you tell them to prove it, if they correctly say all these, they'll, they'll say what they are, then they flip each one up in any order. If they're correct, they immediately win the game. If they're not correct, you immediately win the game. So boasting can lead to an end game uh, condition immediately. That's pretty much the whole game. First to three points or the first to win at a boast is gonna be the winner. All right, well, there you have it. Now, I wanna preface this by saying when Riot Games contacted me about possibly getting a, an early copy of this, I was super excited because Mechs vs. Minions is still to this day one of the most amazing board games, period, because it did something it had, had never really been done before, which was a company coming out of a different industry, video games, making a board game, doing it for their first time, and knocking it out of the park with production, with with, with gameplay, with the gaming community was up and arms like, whoa, I mean, the price for that game, they were basically just selling the game, I think at a cost, just like it was for the fans of the video game. We just wanted to make something cool for you guys. But the board gamers are like, whoa, we could get this game for this much? Oh my gosh, this would have been double if it was on Kickstarter. And the game is awesome. I still, It's still one of my favorite 
uh, productions. It's the most amazing table presence, and it's one of the best cooperative games I own. So when they had contacted me, I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. I'm so excited. Riot Games coming out with something new. Can't wait. And when the box showed up, I was very surprised because I had seen the box cover. I looked it up, but you couldn't really tell how big it was. And when it showed up and it was so small, I went, did I, did I get like the wrong box? What's going on here? I was just surprised that they went from some grandiose huge thing to this tiny thing. So first of all, I was surprised when it showed up. Now, let me first talk about the quality of the game itself, the components I mean. The game is a solid production, it has a great box, a little, I know a lot of people don't like lids and tins and stuff like that, but this one works really well. It's very solid, it looks cool, and the components of the actual stones are awesome. It feels like big, huge, chunky domino style circles with great sort of you know, embossing on there. It looks great, it feels great. The tactile nature of the game moving makes the game feel good. Unfortunately, that's, pretty much the most of the positive things that I'm gonna to have to say about the game. The game is is mostly a memory game with bluffing. Uh, and both of those two things, you know, try to make it unique. The problem I have with the game is, well, and I gotta tell you that I typically don't like memory games. So I'm, I'm predestined to maybe not like it as much, but I gave it a fair shot. In fact, there are a couple of memory games that I do love, like Memoir, which is a cute little easy family level memory game that's awesome or open sesame who came from the designer of seven wonders i do have some memory games that i do very much enjoy but in general it's not a mechanism that i like and in this game the memory aspect of it wasn't something that i felt like like made it stand out that was so different or unique or used it in such a way that made me enjoy that aspect of it and when you go to the bluffing aspect of it i like bluffing games i don't i, I like trying to mess with people's head and I'm thinking this, and you know I'm thinking this, and I know that you know that I'm thinking this, and let's do something else. And I do like games that have that sort of above the table action, but again, with this one, I, it just didn't execute the way I would have loved to have. There's, there's other great little bluffing games out there, like Mamoos or Skull, you know, things like that. And it's like, you take these two elements of memory and bluffing, and you put them together, and it is what it is, on their own, this game did not stand out for me, and together, the game didn't stand out for me. Um, but I think, this is gonna be total speculation, but I have a feeling that when Mechs vs. Minions came out, all the board game community, or most of us, were in love with that game, as I just mentioned earlier. But I imagine that the play people that they catered to, that made this for, the, the, the video game players, got that game, probably opened it up, looked at the rule book and went, um, this thing is nuts. What is, what is this? this? All these rules, all these components? I just want to live in that universe and I want to just be able to play something without all this work. And I can imagine maybe they got a lot of kickback from a lot of those players that were like, this thing is not it. If you guys do another game, you've got to make it more approachable. And I think this is probably their, and again, this is total speculation, but I'm just imagining they've already shown us what they can do. And to pull back and do something like this, I can only imagine they're catering towards the video game crowd that wants something simpler. But I would also say, well, it's in the genre and it's in the it's in the, the, the world that they like, but it wasn't very thematic at all either. So I'm not quite sure. I feel like this game is kind of in no man's land. It wasn't really for the people that love Mech Special Minions and it's maybe people like it that like the video game. I don't know. Um, but for me, it was a miss. And But because Riot Games has the track record of making Mech Special Minions, I'm always gonna check out and be excited about anything they come out with. But for me, this one was a miss and that is Tellstones the King's Gambit. Lucky Duck Games has launched a brand new online shop and are offering you, my viewers, a special discount. During checkout, use promo code GAMEBOYGEEK10 and you'll save 10% on the price of your games. On the Lucky Ducks Game Shop, you'll find exciting new releases such as Tang Garden, which I recently reviewed, and the link is below, and It's a Wonderful World, as well as award-winning games like Chronicles of Crime, which is one of my favorite cooperative games of all time, and Vikings Gone Wild. So why not visit LuckyDuckGames.com now and find something new to play?